It's me, Brian. <laughs> Good morning. It's about, oh, I don't know, 8.30, quarter to nine, somewhere around there. But currently, the ambient temperature is like around, oh, 40 something. The wind is blowing out of the north, right at about oh, 8 to 12 miles an hour, gustings in between somewhere. But the humidity is pretty low. It's been really, you know, like really windy the last couple of days. But spring is here. It's going to be warm today. It was like 70 something yesterday. You guessed it. It's that time again. <laughs> Discussions with Noi and other, you know, unrelated ramblings. <laughs> right? First of all, I'm going to address a couple of you. Right, Gmail, Gmail mailbox. Good, dude, nice knowing you. Right, you know, saying I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> right, but I don't understand what you're talking about, censorship. <laughs> if there was some true censorship, right, there would be no such thing as ghost, ghost hater. But, you know, good luck in your future endeavors, you know what I'm saying? I, that's why I quit doing Instagram because of all of the, you know, commercial bullshit and all the scammers and the bullshit. That's, that's why, I, you know. But I feel you. I understand you. You know what I'm saying? Right? Good luck, bro. Thanks. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate you. You know, you're welcome to come back anytime. Watch whatever you want. I know you watch it a lot. Thank you. All right? All right? Okay. Gage. Right? Uh, from the, sir, from the perspective that you're looking at, you know what I'm saying? You're pretty much almost correct, but you gotta, you know, delve a little bit deeper into that, you know, in, in, into the psychology of it, you know what I'm saying? Or what this dude Peterson is telling you, cause you're talking about uh, allegoric, you know, al you know, the, the allegorical aspect of humanity is what he's talking about. I'll make a video comparing, you know, a couple of individuals together, right? You know, one of them is Stalin. <laughs> And the other one is a guy named Rose Pierre. Right? Look him up. Read about him before I make the video so you get a better understanding. Right? Okay. So. Uh, prepping. Uh, uh, I forgot about you. Right? And Jared D. You know what I'm saying? Dude, I didn't stop watching you. I still watch you. I just don't comment anymore because I'm watching how the progression of your videos are getting better and better. Right? You know what I'm saying? You're doing good, Jared. Don't worry. I'm still here. <laughs> Okay, copy joke. This morning, you know, so Teresa, Teresa was listening to the to Science Channel or something, and they had an interview with Bob Lazar. I don't know if anybody anybody out there knows who Bob Lazar is, but you know, I'll give you a brief overview. Bob Lazar was a scientist, was one of the research scientists that worked out here at S four back in the 90s and the 80s, somewhere around there, you know what I'm saying, that blew the whistle on all of the, all of the top secret government, you know, research they were doing out there at S4, you know what I'm saying, on the flying saucers and UFOs and all that stuff, propulsion systems, anti-gravity systems, you know what I'm saying, the use of the element barium-115, which is so rare on this planet, you know what I'm saying, that it's almost virtually impossible to find, and other stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Now, look him up, read about him, watch the interviews. He hasn't made very many, but watch some of the ones you, you know, and you make up your mind what you think about Bob Lazar, right here. I'm going to qualify, you know, this right here about myself, right? Now, a lot of you know this, that are loyal subscribers, but a lot of the ones that left know this, right? And there's absolute proof in my playlist catalog, right, Area 51, I actually lived there in Rachel, right, for over a year, right, now, yeah, I've seen a lot of crazy shit, I've seen a lot of top secret government military stuff, right, you know what I'm saying, I, you know, I know, I've talked to a lot of people, I've talked to a lot of the military personnel that used to come to the bar and hang out, you know what I'm saying, so I know a little bit of something, something that's going on over there in Rachel, the Area 51, right, now, there's a number of videos in the playlist, you know what I'm saying, that document a lot of that crazy stuff. 
But there are some things, you know what I'm saying, that, that I saw or I well, or happened in front of me, <laughs> shall we say, you know what I'm saying, that, that I never told anybody about. You know what I'm saying? And it qualifies some of the things that Bob Lazar talks about when he talks about them testing the UFOs and all that stuff and had his two buddies out there in the desert making videos of it. You know what I'm saying? To, you know, for, the, for them to catalog their proof. I have my own proof the very first time I saw something happen that was unexplained. And it took me a couple of days to come to the conclusion that it was unexplainable. Unless you believed in a certain thing. Right? Right? Now, Noah, you know me. You know how I think. Right? You know what I believe in my heart. Right? You know what I'm saying? Now, me personally, I believe that a lot of what Bob Lazar says is true. Right? Because I lived out there. You know what I'm saying? I saw things that, that, that he describes and he talked about. I actually saw them flying around in the sky. And I wasn't the only one. Because usually, you know, when I, when I saw something or something strange occurred, I was by myself. There was always somebody, a visitor or a traveler or somebody there hanging out with me. You know what I'm saying? In, in pitch black, open nighttime sky watching everything. You know what I'm saying? Right? That, that will qualify anything that I say. And I know a lot of you still watch me. You know what I'm saying? Right? That scene, <laughs> whatever. You know what I'm saying? Now, what Bob Bazaar is talking about, or, or the story that's come out of all of this stuff, happened 30 years ago. Right? I was in Rachel, let's see, 22. I was there five years ago. Right? Now, If you put together, Noy, you know, Sam, what Bob Bazaar talks about, and he talks about the mechanics of it, the physical, actual flying saucer that he worked on. He said there was a couple of them, you know what I'm saying? He was, in, he was one of the guys, one of the research scientists that was in charge with figuring out the propulsion system. You know what I'm saying? He, doesn't, he never seen no alien beings. He, you know, he, he saw a spaceship fly up and down, and he figured out how it worked. That was the extent of his job. Like anything else that, that attaches to this, you know what I'm saying, is pure speculation or conjecture, right? But does it fit in with what we're talking about? Sure, it could fit in. They, this, the, the craft that they have could be an old Anunnaki craft that's been, you know, that somebody found billions of years ago and they've been worshiping it as a god, you know, ever since until the government got hold of it. Or it could be one of their, you know, scout ships that, you know, because remember, they're not that far away from us in times of real time. You know what I'm saying? And let me say that again. In terms of real time, they're not that far away from us. They're only about 400 years, right? And remember, they're coming down, right? So they're, the window for them to start launch is opening up for them to get here in time for the planet, you know, to go, you know, to go hit the bottom of the elliptic and start on its way back up. Because you remember, they have two windows. They have the in and the out, right? And we already determined, you know what I'm saying, that the Agigi were the ones that did all the flying in between, yeah. If you put all of this together, you know what I'm saying, with the physical evidence, right, that's on the ground, that surrounds the earth, and you put all that together, you know what I'm saying, with, with all of the historic, right, dogma and theology and bullshit, you know what I'm saying, that links all of this stuff together, you know what I'm saying, then you have some kind of a cohesive story there, no, right? So, uh, yeah, I'll give you an example. <laughs> now this, I know this was top secret military shit. I know it was because of the type of the aircraft. <coughs> One day, it was evening time. It was like just, just the dusk. The, the sun was just almost gone down. Right, you know, over the mountains where the chest where the chest site is out there, by, you know, south of Tonopah. It was about oh, 100 miles from Rachel, open desert, you know, with Queen, with Queen Creek Summit on top, Queen City Summit on top, you know, in the sand and in the valley below. Right? Okay. I was I was coming, walking towards west towards the sunset, and my friend Bob and Jennifer were already out there by the fire pit, you know, saying, getting this fire going, because we were just getting ready to start, because some other people were supposed to come, we were going to park it down, right? Just as I turned around the corner of my other trailer, right, 
I looked up and, and Jennifer said, look, and, and, and there was this airplane. There was no sound, none, right? And this airplane came flying directly at us. It was it was black, just as black as the background of the mountains, but you could see it moving. It came right at us and about 400 yards from us, it turned and it flared up like this. You could see both of the wings, the fuselage, the tail section, you know what I'm saying, the exhaust of the jets, right? You know what I'm saying? It was a, it was an aircraft. But there was no sound. And when he flared up like that, he took off, he throttled up. There was still no sound, but the blue flames of the exhaust got bigger as it came out. Huh? Top secret military stuff. That's, that's what, you know, Groom Lake and Area 51 and all that stuff is about. Right? You know what I'm saying? But I've lived a long time. <laughs> right? You know what I'm I was born in, you know, right in, you know, at the front of the jet age and the technology age. I've, and I've lived, you know, my dad was a Marine. Right? I've lived in all kinds of government military base. I've seen all kinds of aircraft. I've seen all kinds of jet aircraft. I've seen all kinds of fucking crazy shit in the fucking sky because I pay attention and I watch. Sure. Top secret government military shit. But where did the technology come from for them to be able to do this? Because, you know, right? Think about it. You know, what Bazaar says is probably mostly true. Huh? And he's been telling the same story for the last 30 years. Every time he's, you know, needed the money because the government's been choking him out, you know what I'm saying, fucking with him, trying to ruin his life, you know what I'm saying, like they do with all of us, you know what I'm saying, or the haters or the non-believers, you know what I'm saying, you know, and, and people will believe them before they believe you, right? Because it fits in with what they think instead of what you know. <laughs> Right? Experience is the only proof. Right? He says he touched it, he worked on it. Okay, I buy that. Sure, why not? I lived there. You know what I'm How many of you guys have actually experienced something, you know what I'm saying, that was so real, that was so beyond the comprehension of anybody else, you know, right, and let alone yourself at that point? How many of you have tried to tell your story? People look at you and laugh. People look at you and say, ooh, ooh. How many of them actually truly believed you in their hearts? And said, yeah, dude. What? I've said this before. The truth is easy to discern. Right? But no one cares about the truth anymore. Right? They only care about what, what the opinion is, or what the idea, or, oh yeah, that, that, that doesn't make any sense, man. You know, I can't put one and one together. Well, it's not my fault that you're not that smart. Right? And saying, I'm not saying that you have to believe anything, right, that I say. Just like you don't have to do anything I say. Right? And then, but this is the beauty of human intelligence, right? If you remember what somebody says, then maybe, just maybe, that thing that they told you will save your life or get you out of that situation <laughs> that's holding you down. Crazy. Crazy how I always end up rambling about something through the middle of it, huh, Noy? <laughs> right? Right? In every one of the 12 major religions, they all state that God is going to come back in some shape, manner, or form, right? He's going to return, and he's going to wipe the slate clean. Doesn't that sound familiar, No, I remember what, en what Endo tried to do the first day. When, when, when Nibiru was coming back down through on, on you know, one of its orbital paths, you know what I'm saying? And, and they knew that the earth was going to flood. They knew that the gravitational effect of the big giant planet on the earth and the Mars was going to occur. Right? They knew. Right? They knew it was going to flood the planet. Right? And he's, he, he, he ordered all of them up off the planet. You know what I'm saying? And let be what is going to happen. Get rid of them. Right? How do we know what's going to happen the next time their planet starts to get really, really close to us? Right? The scientists aren't telling you any of this bullshit. None. I bet you two or three of them space telescopes that are up there you know, saying, are pointing at it and they're trying to figure out what's going to happen. They're watching all these other asteroids and everything else. 
Why wouldn't they be watching the largest body of them all coming towards us? Anyways, no. Teresa's doing good. She's healed up pretty much pretty good. She's walking up kind of okay, but she's still sore. And there was some damage done to the to the to the first implant. <laughs> right? Done some damage to her body around her pelvic area and her muscle. Right? You know what I'm saying? So she she's probably gonna hop, you know, or skip or something for the for a while. But she seems to be doing good, you know what I'm saying? Physically, right? She's getting better. We're getting better, stronger, stronger, stronger. You know what I'm saying? All right. This coming weekend is Mother's Day, you know what I'm saying? I would appreciate if some of you guys wish you a happy Mother's Day, make you feel a little bit better because she knows a lot of you guys are curious about what's going on prepping. She got enough pine needles, but they were the wrong kind. She needs the long kind. If you can get some long ones, you know what I'm saying? Some that are like six to eight inches long, you know what I'm saying? Up there in Wisconsin where you live at, you know what I'm saying? Those are the kind she needs to weave it all together. You know what I'm saying? But until she can get those kind, the ones out here are too short. And they're, they, once they dry, you know, they, they, they're, you gotta keep wetting and wetting and wetting to keep it all, you know, pliable. You know what I'm saying? But, it, but if you stop working on it, you know what I'm saying? Within, you know, just an hour, it dries out and then ping, right? You know, because <laughs> we're out here in the desert. <laughs> pine needles, pine, pine trees that grow in the desert kind of tend to grow short, squat, and powerful. You know, not tall and long. Right? But anyways. Alright, thank you guys, I appreciate everybody that stuck with me, I know I don't make very many videos anymore, but you know, sometimes I will, sometimes I won't, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're fixing the shower with the shutter lungs closed. <laughs> Please like and subscribe and share this video if you think they need to stop the war. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there that watch me, Marie. <laughs> Right, Christine, thank you. Uh.